First of all, I can't I can't wait for this one. I don't want to be the cocky person in the room, but I'm saying this based off of my brain. What has my brain told me over the past, you know, several how many years? How many hype trains have we seen derailed? And I'll give you two. Jimbo Fisher. Mm-hmm. Mario Cristobal. That's just two. <laughs> Two hype trains are just totally derailed. Now, Jimbo Fisher and Mario Cristobal are having pretty good years now. Just like Dion will have later on. But I told mm-hmm. you guys that this was going to happen. <laughs> I told you. Even my wife texted me and said, yeah, you tried to tell him, didn't you? <laughs> she texted me and said, dang, you were right. I'm not doing this based off of that I hate Dion Sanders or that I hate Colorado. Because Fishing and Hayden and the rest of everybody in ECG will tell you, I've been the guy defending Colorado in a lot of aspects. Yeah, we all have. All of us. All, all of us have. But okay. what you guys look at, I'm not going to get political, but we know what it is. And because I don't agree with the ideals that certain people, people's groups, then I'm not the one that doesn't support what's going on. What... I don't like right now is the hype after three games when you barely beat Colorado State. Barely. And we're going to get into some Colorado State players later on that totally deserve the hype. But you barely get past Colorado State. And people were still high on the fact that they were just going to go on Autzen Stadium, which is one of the weirdest and most high pressure places to play in the country and everybody will tell you that even when Oregon has bad years you don't want to go to Autzen and then just to disrespect the logo and then you got Shiloh saying that they're going to do what they're going to do and then you totally see I know everybody's seeing the video you got the whole Oregon staff ready to go I told y'all this year Oregon was going to be ready to rock I got laughed at when I said that they're going to be my number one number two team in the college football playoff. And they're looking every bit like that. I told you the defense was going to be better. Dan Lanning is an SEC coach coming over from Georgia that was a defensive coordinator during one of their championships. He came over and totally is changing this program. And y'all thought that his defense was going to be bad again? Nah, they're not bad. Their running game is better, like I told you. Their passing game is better, like I told you. And Bo Nix should be mentioned, and he is amongst all the Heisman, right? I did want to point out, because here's where everybody's going to say, well, if Travis Hunter played in the last two games, it could have saved Colorado. Absolutely not. He doesn't play linebacker, guys. The running game against Oregon was running this straight up the middle. They give up 180 yards on the ground every single game. I love you. Shiloh Sanders is their saving grace in the back. And and, and that defensive back. Because the score could have got real ugly if he wasn't making like drive-saving tackles against Oregon. And I know I'm harping on Oregon a lot because that's the game that sticks out the most. That took two losses back-to-back, right? Just to pull up the schedule, TCU, I told you that they lost a lot in the draft and them getting their butt kicked by Georgia was they probably shouldn't have been there and it was all off the hype of what Max Duggan did to get them there. They played a better team. The hype train stopped 60 plus win. Y'all think that that wasn't going to carry over with half of those weapons being there? You're crazy. Nebraska, we're all a little hyped because Matt Rule, we thought was going to go over there and do the things that he has done in every single program. But the hype train has come to a halt with him as well. They can't do it in their first year. It takes time. And we're seeing that with Nebraska, too. They're trying out different things with the quarterback. I even picked them to come and win that game against Michigan, and they got smacked in the mouth by 40 points. Colorado State, 43-35. They won in overtime. That should not have been an overtime game. For it shouldn't have been an overtime game, but they won an overtime and they skated by. The next two games were ugly in their own right. Oregon, 42-6. to six. What do you think Oregon's going to do to the Pac-12 this year if they're putting up scores like that? USC, I almost turned the game off when it was 30-something to whatever it was at halftime. USC's we got to mention not, the defense. 
USC's we not a good to. defense as well. <laughs> the both of their defenses are not good. So I just wanted to remind everybody on what Colorado looked like. Now, the tackling is subpar. We all get that. The running defense sucks. But I want to harp more on the defense because this searing iron of pain is not going to stop until you understand what I'm saying. For those that don't watch college football, for those that don't understand that a lot of this stuff is up for the team. It has to be a team effort just like it is in the NFL. You can't win big games against former Heisman winners, Heisman runner-ups, People are in the Heisman conversation and high-powered offenses with SEC coaches playing defense like you're playing right here. They're number eight in the country. Or I'm sorry, they're number eight out of 12 teams in the Pac-12 in total defense. What yeah. does that tell you? Okay, so you have that. Colorado is 114th out of 130 schools in FBS in rushing defense. And total defense as a whole, <laughs> when you dice everything up, turnovers, everything, yardage, all of that, they are 128 out of 130 in total defense, including everything. They give up 480 yards per game. They oh, are second to last. Wasn't, wasn't Dan supposed to make this defense a top defense according to these people, Dante? It is what it is, man. There are bottom three defense in the country. And one more thing. Everybody hypes up Shador Sanders, but I've seen time and time again throughout all of these games where he throws a what y'all would consider a bomb downfield, and it's just a pass that has to be adjusted to for Weaver and the rest of those receivers to come back and get. Are we just going to ignore this? Are we just going to ignore the fact that Caleb Williams can put a ball on the money? I'm not even going to say any of these other guys, but Cam Ward throws a better ball than Shador Sanders. Right, right on the money. But Shador Sanders, no. because he gets he gets all the yardage that he can, and those receivers make him look way better than he probably actually is in all reality, and he should come back for another year in college. All we see is the statistics and the box score at the end of the day. Yes, does he throw really good balls? Intermediate routes, I don't have a problem with. But if you want that big primetime throw, he's not Bo Nix. He's not Caleb Williams. He's not Sam Hartman. He's not Cam Ward. He's he's not even our, our boy down in Mississippi State, Will Rogers. He can't put a ball on the money like he think he can. And his receiving core has a lot to do with that. So with all that being said, I will end the pain here by turning this down a notch. Colorado I, is good, and they will be really good next year. And And Coach Prime is a really good coach, and I think they have a really good culture. But when you start bringing celebrities to your game, it takes away the aura of college football. Mm -hmm. When you have all this hype coming to your team, it's hard for those kids to, to back themselves up on the field when they're losing by 60 points to Oregon. It puts way too much pressure on your team, and I would try to stray away from all of the hype that is given. Because at the um, end of the day, you care about those kids, I, I and you can't control celebrities and stuff coming to your game because you're a celebrity yourself. But when you lose, it's harder for those guys to start coming through. And when they start seeing the attendance go down and they start seeing the, those celebrities not showing up anymore, if you don't think that that's in their back of their head and their psyche, that's that's bad. And And here's another thing. I hope all you bandwagon Colorado fans can learn something from me today. Make sure... When you support this team, you support them through the losses, too. I don't want to hear no excuses. I want you to keep the same energy the rest of the season because they got Colorado State they got to play. They got to play Arizona, who's got a really good, probably the best athlete in college football on their team that can play punter, kick, kick returner, running back, quarterback, wide receiver on their team this week. I hope you guys can make it past the onslaught that Kenny Dillingham is – that Kenny Dillingham is about to put on you guys. Because USC oh, didn't make it pass. No. USC didn't, didn't pass the test against them either. They won the game, but it was as close as your game it, <laughs> for yeah. three quarters. So, three and a half. Colorado? You better be ready. <laughs> it's All a I'm going to say on this, 
for Shador Sanders, all I'm going to say, there's a reason why he's not top five, even top 10 in Heisman voting. Mm. Whew. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree with all of it, really. All of it. Um, I mean, I think Shador's is playing above average, but he's not playing like a top tier quarterback. I mean, I agree with that too. And all these celebrities at the games and everything like that. I mean, that's a whole other issue. And, and with the supporting your team and, and celebrity or not, if, if this team ends up with six losses this year, y'all better be rooting for them on the off season. Like you got to keep showing up. Don't just, don't just, I mean, just you're either a Dion fan or a Colorado fan. I'm neither. But I support what's going on here, and I I hope that the I absolutely do. It. Absolutely, fishing. it's just it's just at the same time, <clears throat> and and I understand why Dion's doing this, right? Like you know, celebrities come to the games, uh, more tickets sold, uh, hype around the team. They're probably going to put out a Netflix thing about the whole first year of Dion Sanders. Like this, they're they're going to bring the university a ton of money, which is going to bring in more funding, which is going to bring in NIL, which is going to further the program for Dion. So like, I get it. That whole aspect, I get it. But when you say it takes away the aura of college football, it does in a sense. I mean, for Colorado. Now, the good thing is it doesn't, for, it doesn't, in my opinion, for other teams, which, you know, that's the positive side of it. But for if you're if you're a true Colorado fan, and maybe, maybe I'm speaking out of line here because maybe I don't know. I'm not a Colorado fan. But it has to take away just a little bit of what football actually means. But I'm sure... Not really many people are thinking that way, but, you know, I don't know. It's because, like I said, at the end of the day, the hype and all the money and everything like that is going to do nothing but help the program. So they have to be a fan of it also. But from the outside looking in, I could just see it pre being problematic and not trying to nitpick about it. But it's just how I feel. I mean, there's certain things that make college football special and. All the the hoopla and the, the pop culture type thing is and look at the NFL with Taylor Swift and freaking Travis Kelsey. I'm not going to get I into can't, that. I can't. It's, oh I mean, it's garbage. God. Like like nobody, true football fans do not want to see that type of. That's stuff. a great now, comparison. That it's almost the I mean, same type of aura with both Taylor Swift and and Colorado. Spot the difference. Somewhat, yeah. I mean, and it's a great ploy to make money and, like I said, further the program, but. True football fans, uh, you know, it, it, you, I mean, everybody each taste their own into your own opinion, but it's, it is what it is. <sighs> yes, I, I, I agree, fishing. Um, Same. You know, I, I don't mean to go so hard on it because it sounds like, again, that's why I preface this by saying that I've been defending Colorado, but it's one of those things where it's it's so annoying to see people jump on the train of a team that. They don't even know themselves the history of this team. They don't remember the the glory days when they won a national championship in the early '90s. They don't know yeah. what it was like to, uh, um, to to have. Uh, oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? The the running back that won the Heisman. Oh, I forget. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. So I love I love Joe Clatt. He's my favorite on. Uh, he's my favorite media person. Oh, he, Joe Clatt. Yeah, he already played right. Rashawn Salam. Already played right. <laughs> yeah, Rashawn Salam when he won the Heisman. Like you know, what I'm saying they oh, don't. Re Salam. They don't remember those days where Colorado used to used to run the gambit. But now that Dion's mm -hmm. there, they don't remember that they were one and eleven last year. They don't remember that those kids were not playing inspired football at all. I remember us watching the plenty of Pac-12 tape last year, and a lot of those games came up with Colorado. We were like, "Oh my God, they're bad." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But people don't people don't remember that, and that's and that's oh totally fine, and that's totally fine. I, I did want to call out one positive thing that we did see come out of the game last week, and and that's a Marion Miller, a Marion yeah. Williams. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, thank you. That man bald. A Marion Miller is a feel good story. For sure, of yeah. one of those kids that Dion gave a chance and saw all the talent in the world. He is a freshman, and if I'm Dion Sanders, I'm really contemplating telling Travis Hunter to play, especially coming back from his injury, to play full time cornerback with Carmani McLean. Carmani McLean played really good this game as well. He got better as the game mm -hmm. went on, and Travis Hunter was a big part of that coaching him up too. So, I mean, if we want to talk about the positives, we're gonna get a little positive here. 
there are great names on this team. They Dylan are. Edwards, Xavier Weaver, you know, Horn Jr., Amarion Miller. Like, the list just goes on and on and on. I, I just – I get the pop culture and I saw what coach was saying about this too. Like it's, it's great for the sport. You get so many eyeballs on it, but I I always like the pressure that teams put on themselves and, and seeing, you know, isn't it Carvassier smoke on, on Colorado too? Mm -hmm. Carvassier smoke is Mm -hmm. on Colorado. So like, it's, that's what makes, college football great the marion millers of the world those type of stories coming out of nowhere and 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 keeping this game close because really and truly usc couldn't do anything and marion miller just by himself put so much tape on usc that a lot of these teams that are about to go against usc they're about to put their best receiver out there and he, and they're you know, gonna do work you know he didn't have a catch all year right and this was his he didn't first have a catch all year exactly yep mm-hmm and he dropped 200 yards almost on USC. 196 and a touchdown on that seven. That is pathetic if you're USC. And he looked but very incredible, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yep. mean, me and my wife were like, who is this dude? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> another A. Check it out, though. This is another Louisiana kid. Louisiana is a stockpile of great wide receivers. Yeah. If you, if you yep, want a wide receiver, is. you need to go recruit. But that's it for my rant, man. I just had to get that in there because I've been I've been letting them live for you know two weeks, and now was my time. I just wanted to say, just su- support with a grain of salt, man. <laughs> the just hype trains. This isn't their year. They're like two years away. It's easier to be on there when the wave is completely high, but when them lows are really low, are y'all coming right back now? and supporting? I don't we'll see, see that. I see Twitter completely quiet about Colorado now. Same. Mm-hmm. And Joe Clyde has been telling y'all. He's a Colorado fan. He's going to root for his team. But he's been telling y'all that they got some holes. <laughs> Just turn on Joe Clyde every once in a while. Don't listen to us. Go to his channel and go subscribe, man. Yeah. Like, no, stop it. Yeah, listen to us. Listen to us. We're <laughs> always right. <laughs> <laughs>